Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, Good afternoon um, Ambassador Jeffrey Yenma. Um, what brings you to Rwanda? Um, to attend uh, uh, two meetings. Um, the first one was the, a meeting uh, on the AU African Union reform, the okay. reform of the African Union. Mm. And the second meeting uh, is a meeting under the um, aegis of the uh, Transform Africa. Okay. Um, what um, the first meeting, the AU African Reform, um, for those who don't know what it's about, and um, um, it's, I think, or I'm sure it brought, it brought in over 54 foreign affairs ministers from the, from the continent. Um, what's the AU Reform all about? Um, the AU Reform uh, is an initiative of the African heads of state mm. um, who wants to um, who feel that the organization mm. is not um, totally fit for purpose okay. and requires uh, uh, restructuring and reform. Mm. So um, President Kagame, the president of uh, Rwanda, mm. was charged uh, with spearheading that initiative. Mm. And in January, um, he presented his report. Mm. Uh, he had created a small group uh, to help him, uh, and in fact, our minister, former minister of environment, mm -hmm. uh, was a member of that group, mm. and they came up with uh, with this report that was presented to African heads of state mm. at their last summit in um, uh, in Addis Ababa in January. Okay. So, um, so what he was doing essentially uh, in calling together the foreign ministers mm. um, was to look with them at um, the implementation of his proposals, mm. which have now been adopted actually mm. by African mm. heads of state. Mm. So it was really to um, the, the, the wish that it should not just remain a report, mm. uh, it should not just be something that's adopted, but how concretely those uh, that roadmap mm. uh, can be implemented. Mm. Um, the second meeting, as I said, mm -hmm. is on Transform Africa, mm -hmm. which is focusing on smart cities mm. uh, and um, the development of smart cities uh, through information and communication mm. technology. Mm. Why, well, um, going back to the first to the first reason I brought you to Rwanda, you made mention of the fact that um, the previous structure of the AU of the AU was not fit for purpose. Why? Why so? Okay. Um, well, no, that there were certain, maybe not structure, okay, but okay. maybe uh, certain aspects, aspects of the AU. Okay. Now, the first one, and uh, the most um, glaring one, mm. is that about 60 to 70 percent mm. of the African Union's budget, mm -hmm. operational budget, mm. was funded by foreign partners, mm -hmm. mainly okay. European, okay. and, uh, you know, and it was, and of course, their support, uh, because they also have their own economic challenges, mm. you know, uh, 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 lessening, mm. uh, getting less. Mm -hmm. And so the African Union was really faced with you know, a real financial crisis. Mm. And um, the realization dawned that um, this was not a sustainable arrangement mm. and that uh, we needed to find a new mechanism for um, for for raising money for the organization. Mm. So the proposal that they came up with um, is to tax uh, zero, have a 0 0.2 percent tax on certain imports, mm -hmm. identified imports of all the member states. So each country mm. will put a 0 0.2 percent tax. Mm. Mm. This is the same mechanism we have for ECOWAS, okay. for instance, and one or two other uh, regional mm. economic communities. Mm. So uh, it was felt that um, this, uh, the calculation was done, and um, we saw that if all the countries did that, mm. they would have much more than the AU budget, mm. and that they could use a surplus mm -hmm. even for other things. Mm. Yeah. The, reforms, um, the reforms made, how implementable are they? How realistic are they? Um, well, they are realistic um, because everything 
uh, with regards to reform mm. it really depends on the political will mm. of those who have decided to introduce the reform. Mm -hmm. So everything will de depend on the heads of states, the governments of all the countries. Mm. And um, th they are realistic, I believe, this time because um, it's the presidents themselves who are driving this mm -hmm. process, mm -hmm. you know. And, um, and you know, there's a 2063 agenda mm -hmm. for the AU, mm -hmm. which is a roadmap mm -hmm. for the economic, social, cultural mm -hmm. development mm -hmm. of Africa. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a bit similar to the Sustainable Development Goals mm -hmm. of the United Nations. Mm -hmm. And in fact, you know, there's going to be some synergy mm -hmm. between the two. Mm -hmm. So the, I think it's clear that um, African presidents now um, are really determined uh, to ensure that these reforms mm -hmm. will be implemented. And um, one, of the, one of the proposals that uh, they have in this reform mm -hmm. is to set up a unit uh, in the office of the uh, chair mm -hmm. of the African Union Commission mm -hmm. that will monitor implementation. Okay. Um, you know, so uh, I think that's it. your institutionalizing, mm -hmm. you know, the oversight mechanism mm -hmm. uh, for that implementation. Mm -hmm. And I think that's really, really important. Mm -hmm. And then um, the heads of states have also agreed that um, because President Kagame is a champion of this process, mm -hmm. that he will be part of that institutional mechanism for um, uh, o oversee mm. that mechanism mm. for implementation mm. and will be reporting mm. uh, annually mm. uh, on the steps made mm. towards implementation. So I think um, they are realistic. Mm, realistic. Um, mm. Back to the other um, events that brought you to Rwanda. How, from your perspective, um, how do you think um, smart cities can, um, can aid um, economic and economic development on the African continent, pertaining in particular case scenario, Nigeria? Well, I mean, you know, the two go hand in hand, uh, really. Um, your smart cities, you know, you, uh, you're going to be looking at uh, different uh, aspects, mm. you know, safety mm -hmm. of the city, the sustainability mm. of the city, the resilience, mm. um, the infrastructure, mm. the development of ICT, mm. your human capital, mm. the education, uh, you know, of the population mm. there. So the you, you you have to have a perfect synergy, the private sector, mm. governance, mm. Uh, and the community mm. that uh, you know lives live, lives there, mm. and um, and it cuts across all aspects mm. of um, you know of living mm. you know and um, and that will make your city attractive mm -hmm. for especially investors mm. and uh, tourists mm. and uh, you know other um, you know wealth creating and mm. generating mm. Um, you know um, agencies mm. as it were mm -hmm. you know so um, so it's really a modern city mm. that is um, an ideal city that um, makes you know living in the city mm. uh, easier mm -hmm. uh, more comfortable uh, and um, more advanced mm. you know so it requires a lot of interventions as mm. I said you mm. know the education, technology, mm. uh, the social uh, aspects, the governance mm -hmm. uh, structures, um, innovation is going to be a critical part mm. of that smart city mm. so that everything, you know, is smart, dynamic mm -hmm. and uh, progressive. Mm. Um, on the diplomacy front, um, some would say and some would argue that um, Nigeria isn't really pulling a weight presently on the African continent. As the Foreign Affairs Minister um, 
What 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 did you say about that? Um, well, you know, it's such a, a very general kind of statement mm. that lacks specifics. Mm. You know, um, and that is not always clear what people mean when they say that. Mm. But you see, um, each government will have its priorities. Mm -hmm. And its priorities will extend to its foreign relations mm. and its foreign policy. Because mm. what you want to do is you want to attain those you know, goals. Mm. And then you leverage also on your membership of the international community to mm. achieve them. Mm. And, um, and when you look at it, this government had three specific goals. Mm. Um, to achieve a greater security uh, in the country, mm. um, to um, address the governance mm. uh, challenges, anti-corruption, mm -hmm. and to promote economic growth. Mm. So our foreign policy drive in Africa, as around the world, mm. has been structured to um, to attain those objectives mm -hmm. you see and, um, and 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 this is what we've tried to do so if you look at um, on the security side mm -hmm. we have engaged with Africa mm -hmm. um, to to uh, our voice has been heard mm -hmm. because African countries have come to support us mm -hmm. in our uh, uh, security objectives. Mm. We have the multinational joint task force, mm -hmm. the African Union mm. has keyed into that mm. and um, then you see Nigeria playing a role in Somalia, mm. um, playing a role in uh, Liberia mm -hmm. and our engagement uh, you know in the Gambia, mm -hmm. you know all this to provide the security architecture framework mm -hmm. in Nigeria mm -hmm. and on the African continent. Mm -hmm. So I think our voice has been heard um, from that point of view, mm. uh, security-wise. Nigeria is a permanent member of the African Union Security Council, mm. you see. So, um, and so any decision on security mm. by the AU, uh, Nigeria is, uh, uh, is uh, consulted and mm. plays an important role. Mm. And in ECOWAS, uh, Nigeria has the commissioner for peace and security, mm. you know. So, so I think our presence uh, is very much, we're very present mm. and our voice is, is very much heard. Mm. And we're driving a lot of the peace initiatives mm. in South Sudan, uh, in Somalia, mm. um, you know, and of course, I mentioned Liberia, mm. the Gambia, mm. and so forth. And if you look at um, anti-corruption, mm. you know, that's a real challenge for us as a country. Mm. And, um, you know, we've, we, our foreign policy has been very dynamic. Mm. We've engaged with countries mm. around the world. Mr. President mm. has put it on the top of the international agenda, mm. which was no mean achievement. Mm. And, um, and, and we have a lot of countries, because of Nigeria's lead, mm. you know, that are, are um, pushing this agenda. Mm. And the most recent result uh, is in the UN where a resolution that Nigeria was pushing mm -hmm. on the illicit flow of funds mm -hmm. uh, should be adopted by the UN as a resolution. Mm -hmm. Now, binding UN member states to take measures that Nigeria wants to see taken in the area of um, you know, fighting, especially the illicit transfer mm -hmm. of, uh, of uh, loot mm -hmm. and resources mm -hmm. from developing countries. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we've, um, we, we, we've made our presence felt mm -hmm. uh, in that area. And then on the economy, um, you know, we face serious economic mm -hmm. uh, challenges. Mm -hmm. So the big challenge that we face is government. Uh, the, 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 the main challenge mm -hmm. in addressing those was to bring back the confidence mm. uh, of foreign investors mm. in, in Nigeria. Mm. Um, but for that, we needed to show that the government you know, was really tackling security issues, mm. really tackling um, you know, governance mm. uh, issues. Mm -hmm. and, um, and we've been very aggressive in our foreign policy mm. in that direction. Mm. And part of uh, um, the work we've been doing in that area has been also the work 
that um, the Vice President um, has been doing uh, in chairing the committee on the, on the Presidential Enabling Environment mm -hmm. uh, Committee. Mm -hmm to make uh, 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 ease of doing business mm. uh, uh, in Nigeria mm. uh, to, 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 to push that. Mm. And, um, and, and, you know, we're making a real headway mm. uh, in making Nigeria a lot more uh, attractive mm. for doing business mm. uh, uh, in. And within the AU, we're also, you know, um, supporting the initiative for a free Africa uh, trade area mm -hmm. because we feel that it will give us the opportunity to also, you know, penetrate mm -hmm. uh, uh, into other African uh, countries, mm -hmm. develop a bigger market mm -hmm. uh, in Africa, mm -hmm. and and the AU uh, has bought into that idea mm -hmm. because there's now this, you know, uh, uh, free continental trade uh, mm -hmm. area mm -hmm. that um, that has been set up. Mm -hmm. So I mean, you know, so when you say that Nigeria's voice is no longer being mm -hmm. heard, if you look at it in the context of achieving our primary Specific. objectives, mm -hmm. then I think that we're doing very well indeed and we're very, um, you know, respected. Okay, um, two more questions to go. Let me put it to you, um, referring to one of the comments you made. How was, um, how was Nigeria able to pull off um, the Gambia, the Gambia, um, should be political turmoil. How, how were we able to pull it off? Knowing full well that um, for a while we had not dabbled or we had not gone into any neighboring country to to help um, them sort out their political um, quagmire. Yeah, uh, well, I think a lot of that um, is um, a reflection on the. Uh, personal prestige mm. uh, and esteem mm. that uh, African leaders have mm. for President Buhari. Mm. Um, because when we were faced with that crisis, mm. um, they came to him uh, and asked him to, um, first of all, to undertake a visit to the Gambia. Mm. He agreed to undertake this visit uh, with uh, three other presidents at the mm. time. Mm. So it was a request. So Nigeria, mm. he didn't impose mm. himself mm. on Nigeria on the crisis. Mm. Um, the other African leaders, uh, West African leaders, came and asked him to go. So he went, and then when they had the ECOWAS summit, mm -hmm. and then they were looking to him for direction. Mm. The ECOWAS summit of uh, uh, presidents then formally asked him to become the chief uh, negotiator mm -hmm. uh, for the um, for the crisis, mm. and uh, he accepted that, and then he came out with a strategy that um, that really um, proved to be decisive. Mm. You know, the first one was to stay engaged diplomatically mm -hmm. with the president of uh, Gambia. Mm. The second one was not to allow judges. Mm -hmm. uh, to, to go, mm -hmm. uh, uh, to mm -hmm. be used, mm -hmm. uh, to prolong uh, him. Mm -hmm. um, the third one was to um, uh, to get a military, put in place a military option, mm -hmm. you know, uh, and, and these were things that he himself, uh, you know, thought of mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, and, uh, and initiated. And the fourth one was that to recognize the um, the, the elected mm -hmm. uh, a president mm -hmm. to go even if it's outside the country. Mm -hmm. So those four, that four-pronged strategy, um, delivered the, the results. Mm -hmm. One final question: What's the title of the book you are currently reading? <laughs> well, I don't even have time to read any books at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, yeah, no, you know, I'm not. Uh, I'm not even sure that uh, it's been quite a long time since I had any so. an opportunity to to read because mm -hmm. I'm uh, I'm trying to get the Nigerian foreign policy uh, situation right. <laughs> Thank you very much for your time, sir. Okay.